the 2018 Mac Mini is here, finally. I was super excited about this machine when I saw Apple's presentation, but then they didn't really say anything about the processor, if it was able to hyperthread or not. They didn't really tell you that you were going to be able to upgrade the RAM on your own. And of course, they didn't say anything about thermal throttling. So I went to the Apple store today and I asked these questions to one of the guys and he basically had no idea. He told me that I had to buy one and test it and return it if I didn't like it. Which if you think about it is really poor answer and a really poor user experience. I bought one because I'm gonna return it but otherwise like that's that's not helpful at all. Uh, one funny thing about the Apple store was full of watches and iPhones uh, there was only one Mac Mini on display. That's quite sad. Anyway, let's go and test this one. Don't worry, this is a real one. <laughs> let's go and run some tests. This is the setup that I will be trying to replace. This is where I work on my home projects and I do research. And at its core is a 2011 dual core MacBook Pro, which I absolutely love, but uh, it's getting old. And it has a number of hard drives and things attached to it. So I want to see if I can replace this one with something new. Here it is, guys, running nice and quiet on top of my audio interface. This is a nice form factor. You could mount this in a rack if you wanted to. Just to give you an idea of the size, this is an iPhone SE and this is a 15 inch MacBook Pro. So yeah, it's it's quite small, I like it. It's really quiet, I let it do all the stuff that it usually does when it's running for the first time, which is indexing and all that stuff. So now I'm gonna run some benchmarks. Not really benchmarks, but tests. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run Six. This is a six core machine, so I'm gonna run six of these uh, commands and each one of these commands, what it does is it uses 100% of the CPU. So, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Cool. You can see that the power immediately ramped up, the frequency also ramped up to 1.3, uh, sorry, 3.9. This is the frequency I guess that only for one core, I'm not sure how this works. And the temperature is raising, the fan is still not working, so it's really quiet. What you hear now is a plane that is, is passing next to my house. Activity monitor, you can see the six cores running 100% CPU. The activity monitor, here you see the six processes. And now you can start to hear the fans. So let's have a look. I don't know if you can hear that, but this is blowing quite a lot of air, much more than a MacBook Pro and it's hot air, of course. And if we have a look, the temperature is getting stable somewhere around 100 degrees, and the frequency is stable, it's not throttle, throttling so far. So let's just let it run for a while and see what happens. This is 621, let's let it run for 10 minutes. Okay, so it's been 5 minutes now, you can see that the CPU is still 100% for each core and the temperature is still 100 degree and the frequency is still 3.9 GHz. So it looks like it's working quite nice. Uh, today is a warmish day here in Sydney, it's 19 degrees, so it's quite hot you would say. So let's stop that and go to Geekbench. And we've got the results of Geekbench. These are the numbers. I will not know if they are good enough for you or not. I don't know what your expectations are. But these are the numbers. I'm gonna scroll 
really quickly if you see anything interesting here just pause the video and have a detailed look at the numbers um, there was a single car this is multi car and yeah that's what we have now I want to show you something here. This is activity monitor as showing only six cores, which means that this is not a hyper threading enabled CPU. So you will get only six cores, which is okay. It's a good number, but uh, somehow I was expecting it to be 12. I was expecting it to be hyper threading, but no. Okay, let me give you some more information about the machine. So these are details that Apple don't tell you uh, and the guys in the Apple store they had no idea about like CPU for example this is the CPU model uh, it says 3 gigahertz but when we run the uh, the stress test remember this Intel lab was showing 3.9 for some reason a few comments about the machine this one dropped the SD card reader for some weird reason, doesn't make sense because there is uh, space here. I don't want to make it thin and light and drop things, I just want to have features. Another thing that's missing here is the IR uh, receiver, which was in the previous one. Another thing that's missing is the audio input. There's no audio input, there's only an audio output jack which doesn't support optical audio anymore so if you're running this as a part of a home theater that might be an issue for you. Uh, in case you're wondering, the output sound, here it is. So the jack is only output, it doesn't work as an input. Uh, so there you go. This is my audio interface. There's, there's nothing there in this machine. There's no microphone, there's no input. So even though it has the T2 chip with Hey Siri enabled and all that stuff, there is no microphone. So yeah, kind of weird. Let's go ahead and launch some virtual machines to see what happens. I'm launching Windows 10 and two versions of Linux. And there you go, we have Windows 10, we have Ubuntu, we have Kubuntu and these machines are running from an external SSD, the Samsung T5 I believe it is, running over USB-C and yeah it's pretty snappy like everything works quite nicely and the CPU does some look too bad uh, but there's nothing running in the background so yeah oh yeah it's quite quite good quite snappy you can open things it feels very responsive which was not the case with my other machine so yeah I'm happy about that one thing that I don't like I was going to show you some tests running training neural networks using TensorFlow which is pretty much what everyone uses and for some reason I'm not able to install TensorFlow here it doesn't find a version satisfying the requirement of blah 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 now this is a fresh new installation I don't have anything here it's just Python 3 so it should be able to work but it doesn't I'm gonna do some reading about this but if this doesn't work huh, that's a huge issue because that's that's what I use for work so there you go guys, those were my initial tests on this machine. Is it good enough? What do I think about it? Well, I think it's good if I'm thinking about replacing this 2011 MacBook Pro. But then about the price, here in Australia that machine is $1700. And for that price you can get a 2015 15-inch Retina display MacBook Pro. This one is quad core, it has dedicated graphics, uh, has 16 gigs of RAM, yeah, that's kind of a, an issue. But to be honest, to be perfectly honest, I never had any limitation with this machine. This is 
really amazing, it's super powerful. I use it for work every day. I do run like quite CPU intensive things. I run a lot of virtual machines and containers and I compile code and I do some data analysis here. And it's great, like, and you can get a second, uh, this one second hand for the same price that you can pay for the Mac Mini. And it's a notebook and you can take it anywhere and you have a display and you have a keyboard and you have everything in it. So, I don't really know guys, I think I'm, it's not worth it. I think I'm gonna return it. But I'm gonna keep it for two weeks. That's uh, the Apple's return policy. I can use it for two weeks. So I can run more tests. Let me know if you wanna know something else, something that I didn't cover here in this video. And I'll let you know guys. See you next time.